everyone. I hope this finds you in good health. This learning is done in the merit of your foolish lema, a complete healing for Esther Batsipura. Welcome to Amuna Until the Sunset. In these emails, I try to focus on ideas of Amuna and the Parshiot, the portions we read from the Torah. Amuna, generally translated as faith, can also be described as accustoming oneself to see all the phenomena of life as manifestations of God's presence. Shana Tova! It is Rosh Hashanah this Friday. What is Rosh Hashanah? Rosh meaning head, Ha meaning the, Shana meaning year, Rosh Hashanah. So it's the head of the year. So it's the Jewish New Year. And just like we have New Year's resolutions for the Gregorian calendar every January, we can have New Year's resolutions in September too. We learn in the Talmud that on Rosh Hashanah, three books are opened in heaven. One for the wicked, one for the righteous, and one for those in between. The righteous are immediately inscribed in the book of life. The wicked are immediately inscribed in the book of death. And the fate of those in between is postponed from Rosh Hashanah until Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, those who are deserving will get inscribed in the book of life. And those who are not will be inscribed in the book of death. For those in-betweeners, Rosh Hashanah is the last chance to pivot, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the Day of Repentance, is the cutoff for that change. But for everyone, really, Rosh Hashanah is a reset button, and because of that, it always makes me think about rollover minutes. Do you remember all those old commercials about rollover minutes on your phone plan? These are the unused minutes of talk time that you pay for uh, each month. The big deal back then was that the minutes would disappear if you didn't use them. But with rollover minutes, the time stayed put and you could continue to use them in the coming month. With the start of Rosh Hashanah, we still have some rollover minutes left to use. We can think about this precious time to reset ourselves, assess ourselves, because Rosh Hashanah is the last chance to use these rollover minutes before they disappear on Yom Kippur. As the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Menachem Mendel Schneerson taught, the head, Rosh, includes within it the life force for all the limbs of the body and controls the functioning of those limbs. Similarly, Rosh Hashanah includes within itself and controls the functioning of all of the rest of the days of the year. All the power lies here, so let's use it. A note, of course we always have minutes, but like anything, we don't do the work unless there's a due date. So here is our due date, let's finish up the job. A second note, this is obviously 100% an analogy that I made up. You will unfortunately come up empty if you word search rollover minutes in your handy dandy copy of any Jewish text ever. With Rosh Hashanah, the year 5781 begins. This Friday we leave behind the Hebrew year of 5780 and enter the new year of 5781. As Jews, our lives are in a constant cycle. For every season, there's a landmark holiday. Fall is Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkot, winter is Hanukkah, spring is Purim Pesach, summer is Shavuot. We also read the entire Chamesh, the five books of Moses, within this same cycle. We know it's fall because we're reading about the Avot, Avraham, Abraham, Yitzchak, Isaac, and Yaakov, Jacob. We know it's winter when we start reading about Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, and Kriyat Yamsuf, the splitting of the Red Sea. And we know it's summer because we're reading about Chet Hamaraglim, the sin of the spies. So I have been reading this book called Life is in the Transitions, Mastering Change at Any Age by Bruce Feiler. Shout out to my grandfather, Gerald Blumenthal, for lending this to me. As the title suggests, this book is about reframing changes in life. But first, we must understand how we as humans understand the basic unit of life, time. Feiler explains that the earliest civilizations who didn't have timepieces thought about time in relation to nature, the cycles of seasons and of weather, There was little chronology going on, no thinking about how one life impacted the other. And so most cultures believed that humans followed the same pre-existing circle of life. The ideal life was not one where you forge your own path, but rather the one that replicated the universal story. Feiler says this all changed once the Bible came along. With the Torah, life became a linear historical progression. And it may seem funny that a cyclical people began the linear life, but it really makes sense because we kind of combined them. Yes, we have our yearly schedule, our set dates and times, but the rest of the world goes on. So each time we read and reread our Torah, each time we learn and relearn about our holidays, each time we assess and reassess our lives, we have a new life experience to inform these milestones. Later, life was looked at as a set of stages. People were looked at as feeble at a young age, strong at middle age, and feeble again in old age. The idea was that the prime of life was middle age, and from there it's all downhill. 
But there's no such thing as the prime of our lives in regard to spiritual growth. When you have growth as the goal, there's never any downhill. There's always room for growth and progress when you are constantly getting chances at renewal and revitalization, like Rosh Hashanah. In this email, I've said a lot of things about assessing ourselves, so I'd like to share a Rosh Hashanah reflection worksheet I put together. The second half of the sheet is inspired by Rabbi Jonathan Sachs' teaching this year. The link to the Google Doc is in the description. Thanks so much for listening. Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova, and I look forward to seeing you all in 5781.